If you are an estate agent, letting agent, or someone who is interested in the property market, then this, the UK Property Markets Stat Show, is for you. My name is Chris Watkin, and each week I have a special guest. This week it's Christian Stott. We'll come to Christian in a second. What is the purpose of this show, and why should you be interested in watching it? Well, the British are obsessed about the property market, and um, we follow such indices as the Halifax Nationwide um, and also the land registry figures. The problem is these stats, the land registry, is six to nine months out of date. And certainly the uh, Halifax and Nationwide are looking at sales that took place two or three months ago. We're looking at um, transactions and house prices from last week. And by looking at those sort of stats, we can know what's, those, what's going to happen to those uh, indices this week. So therefore, buckle in for the next hour and we'll go through what's happening in the property market. This week is week 16 of 2024, which is, looking at my calendar, Monday the 15th of April, all the way through till Sunday the 21st of April. And that's week, week 16 of 2024, and we'll be comparing week 16 with other weeks. We'll be looking at house prices, we'll be looking at transaction levels, uh, price reductions, um, and exchanges. We'll also be looking at some lettings figures as well. Um, and then in the second half of the show, we'll be looking at a town or a city. And this week, we will be going to the city of Southend-on-Sea with Leon Sea next to it as well. And also a little bit of Westcliff, all, all together, all, all beautiful. So that is at the at end of the show. Uh, this week, I'm joined by Christian Stock, who is a bit of a thought leader in the property industry. He used to be boss man of Andrew Grant Estate Agents in the Midlands. And now he's a bit of a thought leader uh, with a few fingers and a few pies with regard to tech. Christian, thanks for joining me today. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Uh, Christian's been a regular presenter, or uh, co-presenter on the show. Comes back every eight or nine weeks, and it's good to have you on board, mate. Thank so, shall we, shall we knuckle down, mate, and let's rock and roll. Let's go and look at them stellar Rudies. So, ladies and gentlemen, we always start off uh, with the national picture, and we're going to start off with the listings, and I'll just go through these uh, numbers now, and then Christian can give his full sight and insight to it. The white line on the graph, can you just see the whole, can you see the whole graph, uh, Christian? I yeah, I got it, yeah. yeah, yeah so a, few, a few weeks ago, I showed the whole screen, and uh, it didn't look pretty. So, as you can see here, the white line shows the number of listings on a week-by-week -week basis compared to the years of 17, 18, 19, and 2023, which were considered more normal years. As you can see, that we have the, the sales have bounced back from the Easter weekend. Um, and actually, in terms of year to date, um, the year, the number of listings is 553,000, and with an average asking price of 466. And you can compare, as you can see on the graph now, how that week 16 compares to other week 16s. In terms of listings, we are 9.9%, uh, I'll just bring that back, we are 9.9% in terms of listings further on than 2023, and we are 9.2% higher than, than the 17, 18, and 19 averages, where the average was, at this point, 507,000. So, what's your thoughts on listings, mate? Uh, what is a glut? Um... It's, it's a really difficult one. Um, no listings, nothing to buy. Too many listings, too much to buy. Um, and I think it, it goes without saying that once you put the power back into the buyer's hands, that starts to impact bidding um, and, you know, the value of the offers. It, it seems actually, because I've obviously whizzed through the slides already, it, it seems that it is not yet glut. No, it is. Um, no I, I agree with you. I mean, we'll just pull up this graph here. You can see here that the number. So this is the, this is on the end of March. So the yellow line, the yellow lines are all the marches. Yeah, the number of properties for sale at the end of the month, and you can see here that was six hundred fifty-four thousand, compared to five hundred eighty-five thousand the year before that, and obviously four twenty when stock was you know agents were complaining that stock was low. But when you compare stock levels to 17, 18, and 19, I mean, just to give you a, a balance, and I've mentioned this a few times, the stock levels in, in the bad year of 2008 in the Q1 were 1.4 million. So By think, this time of year? Yes. 
So that's just context. That's giving you some context. That, Remember it well. Yeah. Okay. And you know the reason house prices dropped is that there was too much supply and not enough demand. Basic economics. Um, I would start to get a little bit warm under the collar if we were getting up to the eight or nine hundred thousands. You know. Well, I think also sales agreed and price at which sales are agreed versus original asking will start to give those indicators as to where that stock profile is at. Um, and I think in terms of some of the other conversations we have, um, more stock, more work, more vendors, more um, take-ons. And yep. so you've got that sort of resource to service element of, you know, our customers experiencing what you wish them to um, because of the amount of stock. We also, we, we do time to sell, don't we? Or, or do we not? Yeah, we yeah. do do time. We're going to be doing time to sell. I mean, ju- uh, what I'll do is that, tell you what, let me just pull up some stats. You just, uh, no one's listening to this, so don't worry. So just fill for a second and I'll just do time to sell as we speak. I'll just pull that up for the national stats. Right, they're just coming up now. Here we go. So in terms of t- new instruction to sale agreed, yeah. UK-based, 69 days. So that that's April 23 to April 24, 69 days. Yeah. Um, it was 48 days, April 22 to April 23. So, um, okay. yeah. But what is particularly interesting is the, the time from sale agreed to completion has gone down from 124 days to 112 days. So it looks like, you know, you wouldn't think this, but conveyances are actually doing a better job at the moment. Why do you know? Potentially, you, you know, some of the challenges faced by conveyances uh, are reliant on a wider ecosystem, including local authorities and things like that. So it could be also that, um, you know, they're starting to raise their game, whether that's through digitization resource or, or purely just, just presenting SLAs, which actually match the demand of the industry reliant on them. Uh, it is nice to see because for me, uh, not only does that period obviously impact um, sales cancellation rates with people getting just frustrated with everything, but the you know for those that are on a, a, a fee on exchange or completion, um, that that time to complete is so important to just putting cash in the till. Indeed, shorter and, the better. I mean, what is one thing that's keeping this market? So we're not flooded with stock. And let's just remind ourselves that we're putting on the market 39,000. Give you an idea. The number of withdrawals, the, the, the number of withdrawals, this is in the first week of April, was yeah. 12,515. And we'll just do the, see if we can do the next weeks because this is always a week behind. So we can't get them in real time. So we're, um, there you go. Are you changing graph? I'm going to try and find that one. I'm no, no, you would No, it's not on a graph. I'm, I'm having. Uh, to, okay. I'm having to do this in real time. Here we go. And then, and the, just wait for that to come through. Yeah. So the withdrawals are running. I, I don't get the data for two weeks, but we're running at around twelve thousand, and that that figures. So there's an awful lot of withdrawals at the moment, which is a, a lot of wasted money that agents are spending on marketing properties. I mean, yeah. Just, just to give, just to remind you, in 2023, 47% of properties left estate agents book withdrawn and they didn't turn a penny, which is, is you know, to only be paid on 52.9% of homes. Is, is Sorry, just withdrawn. That's excluding sales cancellations. Well, when a sales cancels, it stays within the ecosystem of the estate agents. So therefore, it's not leaving the books. A property only leaves the books if she exchanges or withdraws. Right. Unless okay. the vendor sale cancellation co- could ultimately go through to a, a, a withdrawal, but normally the agent whacks it straight back on the market. And then the agent, yeah. the homeowner changes their mind. Unexpectedly back on market. Yes, yes, unexpectedly. But it just shows you that the number of withdrawals, you know, are, are really high. And, and I think, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I've asked for this up-to-date information because before COVID, the, 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 the standard was six out of 10 homes sold with the second agent. That went down to 7% in the 2021. I'm waiting for the up-to-date figure um, so I can share that because I don't think at the moment, my anecdotal evidence and my gut tells me it's not at 60%, but it, it's, it's potentially getting there. Um, any thoughts on, um, on on listings before we move on and go and look at something else? Uh, only in, just in, in terms of what we've talked about, when, when you know listings start to climb, um, 
you know, the buyer's got more choice um, and viewings to sale can go up, offers can come down. Um, and I, I think probably, like you said, or I said, what is a glut? And you, you, you've quite rightly pointed out that we're not at that point yet, but the glut is a tipping point in the market. Um, it is, and what you've got to remember in 2008 is, is that there was an excess supply, but demand was curtailed because people weren't being lent. So you had excess supply, not normal demand, but curtailed demand. So that's really yeah. push prices. And I, as I've said to you before, uh, to anyone that's listened to the show before, is what you should do every single month is go on to Right Move, find out how many properties are currently for sale, add salt of the contracts. And the difference, and that you know, if there's 200 available, and then you add salt of the contracts, it's 150. It takes it up to 350. So therefore, 350 minus 200 is 150. And then map, track those numbers and track the ratio between those two numbers, and it will give you a flavour of what's happening in the property market months in advance. If you know where, and if you were really smart, you'd split it down into either housing estates or bedroom types or or actual house types just to get a flavour, because then you can see that, oh, hold on a second, there's a lot of semis that are coming on the market, not selling. I mean, what is particularly interesting is um, I did some stats. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, I'm a property statistician, and I did some stats for my clients. And what what I did is, and I just uh, just put, give me a second, I'll just uh, pull, pull the details up, is that the number, oh, here we are, um, in the last 12 months, every one the, the average property, one bedroom property had a 45.3% chance of actually selling. This is sale through to completion. Yeah. Two bedrooms, 55%, three bedrooms, 56%, four bedrooms, 44%, and five bedrooms, 39%. Right. So it you know, it just goes to show you that different bedrooms are selling. So if you know what's selling, you can focus your attention on that particular type of property. It's, yeah, if it yeah, if it meets your brand profile, I suppose. Yeah, um, too. Do, do your customers share um viewings to sale with you in terms of that data? I've always found that to be very valid data, a good marker. Um anec anecdotally, yes, sometimes, but not no, right. no, I don't go I don't go particularly looking for it, no. Right. Okay. Right, so I, can you see my graph? Okay, I can. Good stuff. Let's go to price reductions and the number of price reductions this week is at twenty two thousand three hundred. Which, just to give you a flavour of what that means, it means that we are reducing one on every six point six four properties that are presently on the market a month. Okay, so which that number is actually uh, getting. So agents are reducing a lot more properties than they were a few months ago. So that's and yet good. the number of listings is climbing. Yes. Which says what, Chris? I'll let you say it, not me. What does that say? Well, there's no, you know, if you, I mean, we're, we're going to be looking at overvaluing in a second. And I've got some stats that I want to show people, which have just, which have floored me. And especially um, in London, the, the gap between what's coming on the market and what's selling is, well, I'll tell you what, let's go and have a look at that now, because I think that might be of interest to it to everyone. So here we go. I'll just, Right then, stop share, and then we'll go back. Here we go. So, can you see uh, the screen here? So, I'm looking at the the Marketing Insights Executive Summary screen for the whole of the UK, and I would say we're going to be looking at this piece of software in a lot more detail later in the show when we go to South End. But this bit of kit is available for you for your town uh, from the 20A platform. I'm not being paid to say that. Just I love the platform. It's like right with plus on steroids. And uh, can you see the graph here? The red line is the average price of a property when it comes on the market, the average. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the greeny blue line is the average headline price, not what it sells for, but the asking price when she did she did go to exchange. Um, and you can say, well, hold on a second, you don't know what, what the price has come down on. But what is particularly interesting is Hamptons did some research and, and continue to do it every month where they track average asking price versus the price achieved. Um, and that is a, normally a constant one or two percent below. So um it's the trend you're looking at. And what we're looking at here is the, the gap between the two. Okay. Now on average, that that's been around 16 or 17 percent 
What is particularly interesting is this bit here. She's now at 28%. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's been going up steadily. Okay. They, just while we're here, these, these, and again, you can get all these stats on your town. I've got the national figures, but you can see how new instructions and said agreed go out. You know, that's Jan. And then it start better months than she tails off in the amount in the, in the later months. But let's just have a go and have a quick look at inner London, because this is the bit that, that is concerning me. And, it, and I think a lot, don't get me wrong. You know, you ask a hundred estate agents if they overvalue and everyone will say no. Um, Bless. God, look at COVID though. I mean, that is bizarre. Yeah. Okay. And you know, but the magic. Wow. Thing, okay. Look at that. Look how that. Okay. So yeah. Okay. COVID. You can ignore that gap there because that's COVID. The magic thing is this. Look how the red is pulling away from the green. Mm. Okay. That green line has been pretty static for the last two years, where the average asking price of a property exchange of contracts has been around the 800,000 mark, okay? You know, you can yeah. see that. Whilst the average asking price of a property coming onto the market in Inner London, and just so you're aware, Inner London is SWW, SE, E, SE, um, N, NW. So just the, the normal... London core postcodes. What is particularly interesting is you go and go and have a look at outer London and it's a lot tighter. You, it'll just take a while to look how tight that is. Although it looks like we've got a few agents there going a bit happy. But that yeah, is and I just noticed on one of your graphs this morning, actually, that you've got the same picture. Um, where did I see that? Average listing price versus average sale agreed price. Oh, so this is, am I looking at the same data just in your own graph here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. OK, yeah. um, but then we can look at different regions here and you can see how the different regions. So, again, look, the southwest is nice and it's reasonably tight. Southeast. Again, look, notice how there is a lot. To, OK, now this is interesting. Look at the southeast. Everyone gets ahead of themselves in the spring and summer. Then it comes back down to reality. Yeah. Then again, we go spring and summer and back down to reality. Let's go and have a look at, say, like the northwest. See if, if there's any difference there. Again, again, a little bit tighter, but a bit of a gap rising there. Northeast. We'll go to the East Midlands. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you, the magic thing is this, there's always going to be a gap there. The important thing is, is what that gap is, because higher priced properties have a lower propensity to sell. That's always been the case. It's if if the gap is getting bigger, more bigger, either bigger houses are coming on the market, which have a, a lower saleability rate, or we have combined overvaluing. OK, we'll just go to Yorkshire, God's own county. There you go. All good. Stuff. Also, it, 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 you know, it could be indicative that the pitch hasn't changed, but the market did um, in that the 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 valuers on the sofa haven't yet uh, reoriented their message uh, around what is going on. Or they're losing instructions if they try to reorient that message where other agents are still going in at, you know, high price and promising gold. What is particularly interesting is this, is that each week, as I said, we focus on our towns or cities property market. This week we're doing South End, as you know, but there are different agents. You, and we've got stats that prove we can go on a town by town. We go city, we can go UK based, but prove that they're overvaluing but you can see they're working their stock and getting them away. Whilst there are other agents that overvalue, don't work their stock because we can see the stats if they're working their stock because they're reducing the price and they're not getting away and they have a high withdrawal rate. You know, if you've got to overcook it a bit to get the business and you're telling people, well, let's try it because other agents are, that's great, but work your stock. Yeah. And, and it, it dumbfounds me that valuers are really scared of um doing their own vendor you know vendor calls because it's not sexy is it it's well, you know. well what's very difficult i think is where are we now 24 aren't we so over the past four years we've been through very unusual times and in particular uh 21 through 22 where you could put really crazy prices on stuff and and degree sales at that price, which is hard because I think everybody had to think beyond where they were firmly 
comfortable with pricing and think, well, on a good day with a bit of luck and a tailwind, what could I maybe get for this? And that's difficult because now we're describing what what at that time was um, purposeful and often accurate speculation is now described as overvaluing. Uh, but but the, the the truth is that value piece is a dark art, and I, I think that the the data itself, whilst it's in general publicly available, has made that dark art probably a little bit darker because there are still agents getting away with great prices on properties that that push the boundaries of what the data say is definitely, adequate. Definitely, I've, um, we we were looking at one last week, and there was one agent that was quite clearly overvaluing, according to the the automated valuation model. Yeah, who was getting three, four grand more for the for the same house that the other agents were were getting. Because again, yeah. this is where it allows you to to look at that. So again, I think they, it's all about if you you know being honest with the remember we're in a service industry. We're here to serve the client. Put the property on at the right price if you can, but be honest with the with the homeowner. And if you've got to work your stock, work your stock. Oh, on that point, I think I agree with you entirely. Um, and I suppose to describe it's only overvaluing if the vendor didn't know you wouldn't get that price. Yeah. Um, or, or, you know, was, and, or the intent was malicious to then slice it off. You know, there are some large estate agency uh, firms out there that pay on listings and then pay on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah I, I get that. Yeah, uh, I do. Yeah. And they're, um, you know, they're big firms. So they are going to, you know, and these these firms are going to, there's going to be one in every town and normally in the top three. Right. Now, should an agent with with that sort of size affect the whole of the market? Well, again, the sort of you know estate agents just don't like losing listings. You know, if they were smart enough, they'd say right, they'd walk away and say no, this isn't for me. But then they'd keep in contact with them. Again, this is it. You know, if if you don't sell it, give me a call. You're never going to hear from that person again. But if you're giving them a reason, you're contacting them. And my advice to any agents watching this is why don't you send them, you know, put them on WhatsApp. And if they're looking for a three bedroom semi, just send them every three bedroom semi that comes on the market. Saw this, thought you might like it. And also if they're living in a four bed detached house, when a competitor's property comes on like what they're selling, send that this has just come on the market, it's a competitor, I thought of you. If you do that, you're going to get it second time round if the other agent does overcook it. But no, it's all about the new properties. Let's get it. You know, they love me to bits. I don't care if what I've lost because they hurt me. You know, oh, come on, guys. Right, let's get back to sales because uh, we're rambling on. We're rambling. Right then. So gross sales this week, 27,071. The best sales month in the UK for two years, just under two years. 27,000. We have to go back to July 22 to get that sort of level. So the one. So look, rising sales, rising stock. Are we actually um, pushing back towards this million plus transaction uh, year? Uh, what, what? Just out of interest, I don't know if I've had your prediction for this year yet. I've still got 880 firmly in my brain from last year. What's your prediction this year? Um, I'm not saying yet because we've got the Euros. No, we've got the Euros coming up and we've got. And, and, I'm doing some analysis on all of the general elections. Yeah. As to how that affects the property market. And as I said, we've got the Euros this year. So we've got a month where basically everyone's down the pub drinking cans of uh, pints of Stella and Foster's. Yeah. Other beers are available. Um, so I don't know. Thank God. <laughs> Too early to call. But, okay. Okay. But so, the, well, the, this is a good sign. It's an, it's an excellent sign, but uh, not but yet remember that we've got some bank holidays coming up so that's good so therefore look at you know look at look at the graph we have a roller coaster for two months where easter and may bank holidays it affects the property market so we're on a roller coaster i so agree we, what is nice to hear is that uh it's interesting that we were just talking about pricing strategy because what is nice to hear is that stock is rising sales appear to be being agreed um so those are good ingredients for making the till ring. And as to what the impact of the pricing is going to be, maybe we don't find out until September. Who knows? I think as as, as last week's guest said, um, is- um, a, a It was Steph. last week's Steph. Steph, yeah. Oh, it was a great one last week. I enjoyed that. And, you know, this is the quarter to make hay, right? Yeah. You know, you know, the euros will have a slight effect. The general election will have an effect. It always does. You know, you know it, but normally what happens 
as long as there isn't a hung parliament, is that we have a, a, a dip down on, on, on sales activity, but normally it, as long as there isn't a hung parliament or uncertainty, because that's the thing that kills the market, pardon me, it normally makes, it, makes that up in a couple of months afterwards. Okay. I, I thought capital punishment was frowned upon these days. Right then, let's carry on. So, uh, sales year to date, three hundred gross sales, three hundred seventy-seven thousand, which is ten point three percent ahead of um, twenty twenty-three, and seven and a half percent ahead of the combined uh, seventeen, eighteen, and ninety figures. The average asking price of a property sale agreed. We've already mentioned this earlier in the show, three hundred sixty-four thousand. Again, let's just remind ourselves: the average asking price of a property coming on the market, four hundred sixty-six thousand. Sorry, just do that again. The the four sixty-six coming on, yeah, yeah, going uh, and getting chalked up is three six four. And you and you said it was the three beds that are the. Uh... The, the popular stock. Okay. Pop, popular stock. It is interesting. I, um, a couple of days ago, I published on LinkedIn. I looked at the four big agents in London, inner London and outer London. Yeah. And um, th there are there are two what we would call more Marks and Spencers, John Lewis types of estate agents in the top four who are, you know, good. And then there are two, you know, agents that are quite, you know, cutthroat in there and that, i say that's a compliment what is particularly interesting is this is that the agents who were a bit more old schooly who actually exchanged on a hell of a lot more of the homes that they listed tended to focus on the three beds and the two beds as opposed to the more dynamic cutthroat agents who tended to focus more on the one and two beds but their exchange ratio was much lower right and I think that's that's an important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, is that with this software that we look, you can see which agents are putting on what, and then you can split it down to bedrooms and give you a flavour of what's happening. So it does work. It does work really well. Um, there you go. Let's just put that there. Look, that, that is stuck. Okay, that's a standalone week. But just look at you know, look at the look at the turquoise, which are just almost flatlining. What's yeah. the asking price is going up. Yeah. Right. And again, I I do you know. That is my 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 uh, my concern, and it's an incremental. Is there's something in it? Definitely is, and some of it is London that that's screwing these figures up. Okay, but generally, overvaluing. You know, stock levels are going up, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's not as if we're 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 back to the days of twenty twenty one when we were having. Let's just pull it up. There you go where you had 50% less stock. You know, are, is there agents out there who remember the times of 21, 22, where basically put it on at any price? Now, we're, we, you know, things are a bit better, but they're still acting, like you said earlier on in the show, Christian, like it is 21. Well, yeah, I think um, the, the factor that's got to come in to those, uh, let's call them COVID, post-COVID years for the want of a better description, is the frustrated buyer. There was lots, thousands of frustrated buyers uh, who took longer to find more viewings, um, more offers, et cetera. So it's not beyond the realms of possibility that one of the factors is fewer frustrated buyers. And that's a good thing because that doesn't indicate a problem with the market. In fact, if anything, for me, it indicates repair in the market. In that you know people can buy a house, which is great, isn't it? I mean, if you come Ooh. to the market to buy a house and you can buy a house, you've achieved everything you set out to. Um, and and it could just be that that more buyers are being satisfied, yes, by being able to buy a house. Which you know, if you look at the, certainly the immediate, uh, or let's call it that transition period from the utter shell shock of COVID itself to the boom that came probably September October. We can argue the the dates if you wish, but um, you, you know back then. You couldn't buy a house. It was an absolute ruck no. yeah. to, to, to buy a house. Whereas, you know, perhaps now you can. How lovely. What is interesting, and as I said, there's only the, the, my data can only go so deep, but anecdotal evidence suggests that in my hometown of Grantham is, is that the two and three bedroom semis are selling like hotcakes, but the right. four bedroom estate boxes are just hanging around. So is, is that because they've they've pushed through the ceiling then in terms of what people are willing to pay for them, you think, or but again, if you're borrowing money to buy a four-bedroom detached house, your mortgage payments are going to be a hell of a lot more than, say, a two- or three-bedroom semi. 
aren't they? So again, that could be some issue there. And also some of this data, and again, it can only be anecdotal because we won't know everyone's motivation, but I'm hearing there's a lot more downsizing. So again, the, if by the very nature of downsizing is, is, that, is that there's a lot more of the bigger stuff coming on. So again, some of that could, could some of that could be, you know, that uplift, that uptick in the average asking price. Well, and, and you're as, as as far as this conversation goes, you're saying that's lending driven that people don't like paying interest. Well, you've got two things: you've got people downsizing, so bigger houses are going to more more houses are coming on the market, and the people who are going to buy it have to raise quite a bit more finance. And but, but, more... but by that, are you saying downsizing as in um... granny and grandma at sixty five? Yes, which isn't a huge proportion of the marketplace, or or is there perhaps less aspiring then that fewer people are going up to those bigger houses? I don't know, because okay. downsizing is one thing, but downsizing is a very specific space. I do think there's an interesting question around that the family that needs three bedrooms but would like four, yeah. now that interest rates are a little bit. I mean, interest rates actually are low. Uh, they're just a lot, lot higher than we've gotten used to. Um, you know, whether there's a section of the marketplace that is not climbing the ladder quite so far as perhaps they wanted to uh, because of the increased cost. Um, hopefully this year, um, who knows? The, who knows? the Twittering suggests it might start to come down, but who knows? So there we go. Let's this come back to the difference. There's there's your twenty eight percent difference, and as I said the long term average is sixteen or seventeen percent. Um, number as I said, number of sold is twenty seven oh seven one, which as I said is the highest level for two years, and that's week sixteen standalone. You know, let, let's call eighteen percent twenty percent, right? And take a three hundred thousand pound house. If you're the vendor of that house who heard one thing on the sofa and got another entirely from their bank statement, that's a lot of cash. Mm. But remember, we're not saying the price has dropped 20%. We're just saying because lower price... No, but as that gap widens, it will influence each purchase, won't it, or each sale? Yes, it will. And as I said, I, I, I can only have anecdotal evidence that it's, some of it's overvaluing, some of it is in a London, and, 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 and the, you know, and the because mortgage payments are higher as a, compared to a few years ago, it's a big, it's a big jump. Mm. Yeah, look, who knows? No, we're just giving some opinions, not the opinion. Okay. Um, other slight concern is price is, is fall throughs are slightly on the rise and have been on the rise now for a little while, but tempered with, this there are more house sales so therefore there's going to be more fall throughs by the very nature of do you the... measure this as a percentage or just as the this is the oh, percentage right okay. so ignore the spikes because they're the crystal spikes the numbers are so low that it's always going to spike but, you know so this week this you know just to give you an idea which, here we go I'll just pull up the stats this week 22.1 percent fall through rate just for anyone that hasn't watched the show before number of gross sales this week Number of fall throughs this week, fall throughs as a percentage of gross sales. Not a perfect measurement, but it's a damn good one. Um, so if you've got a hundred sales this week and twenty-two fall throughs, twenty-two is twenty-two percent of a hundred. That's where the twenty-two comes from. So uh, last week it was twenty-one point six. Week four twenty-two point three, twenty point three, twenty-one point six, nineteen point six, twenty-one point three. So she's bouncing around that twenty-one mark. And again, just to give you an idea, that was the that was the fabled quasi quartung budget where fell throughs went up to forty percent. Yeah, she yeah. Was bouncing around the early twenties, which is where we are now. She went up to the thirty percent during last summer when interest rates were high. She's been drifting down slightly, slightly. And again, that that looked, you know, we had a really good month week. That one, which was about sixteen percent, but again. A swallow doesn't make a spring or summer, whatever it's called. So we're just bumbling around there. So that doesn't look pretty, but that gives it context. Yeah. And, and actually, as far as our conversation today is concerned, I don't think there's a huge amount in there. Um... Okay. Okay. Uh, so these are just the number of fall throughs, just comparison. Um, to, and again, you know, look at the fall through rate, but that was COVID. We were still in COVID um, in April. Um and the numbers were much lower. Should we move on to Resi net sales? Yeah. 
Okay, so net sales this week are, I'll just pull that up, net sales this week, let me just pull the stats up, uh, 21,089, as you can see here, compared yeah. to the net sales in all the other week 16s. Um, 200, this is the stuff we're going to get paid on, ladies and gentlemen, 295,912 net sales, which is 104.8% that over the 17, 18, and 19 figures. Um, that figure last week was 104 dead. So it's it's we're pulling away from 17 or 18, although that's going to go up and down because of Easter's, because Easter's do fall a little bit differently. And we're 9.9% .9 higher than we were in 2023. So if you're asking so far, Christian, where are we going to be at the moment? Whatever, whatever we ended the year on in 23, at the moment, it's nine percent higher. So yeah, so it might be interesting. Um, the this this graph here, the white line is twenty twenty four, the pink line is twenty twenty three, and the orange line is the average of seventeen to nineteen. We've got the other months in the other years in there, the COVID years, to give you some context. But again, still not bad at all. Thoughts on this? And what to say about it really? Because. I mean, it's, it's, if I track it with, if we say 23, cut 20, 21, and 22 out, maybe. Maybe 22 was a calming down period. Cut 21 out. It seems all right, doesn't it? It seems on yeah. track. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, notice how everything drifts off now. So we're going to go through the roller coaster. Yeah. Okay. That's some of them, isn't it? Yeah. And again, the... If you act, I know you've got the average of 17 to 19 and the and the dips look a little bit calmer, but if you actually look at the individual years, it is all over the place. It's just by the very nature of taking the average of the year, those bumps are going to be a bit more flattened. But you know, that that white line is going to go down, then up, and down and up. And then she'll just start drifting off into June and July. Everyone can go on holiday and she'll just carry on drifting down. Um there you go. Do you think it's going to track with seventeen? Do you? I, I think I think I think it's going to. You know, the pink line was twenty three, which is not as good. So she's going to probably track. Well, I mean, at the moment, she we are. Um, let's just confirm we are four percent higher year to date than the the orange line. Yeah. Okay, so so therefore it's gonna it's gonna trap the orange line or slightly a bit above unless nothing help nothing weird happens. Again, you know, look, yeah, that's Easter Bank holiday. So it's amazing how different holiday periods do affect property market. Um, Sorry, hang on. You said week thirty five was Easter Bank holiday. Can't be. That's East. That's Easter. That Bank. can't be. That's August Bank holiday, isn't it? Uh, sorry, my apologies. Easter, August, Schmorgast. Yeah. That okay. Is the, that is the August bank holiday. Sorry. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> I always mix them up. Um, right. Okay. Just a couple more graphs before we go to uh, South End. Um, gross sales as a percentage of listings at sixty-eight. That just gives you a nice flavour. Um, now then, this this is this is particularly interesting. This uh, we are looking at the pound per square foot. Now, what is particularly interesting is a number of things here. Um, the pound per square foot figure is matches the land registry data on exchange with a correlation of about 98%. Right. So that's the pink, that's the green line, okay? Yes, yeah. The, the orange line is sold subject to contract. And if you could just imagine you move the, ori the orange line about five months to the right. Yeah. The matching is about 98% using the Pearson correlation coefficient. Yep. Sorry. Um, and so therefore, the orange line shows us what's going to happen to the land registry five, six months in advance. Yes. So if you recall, the land registry said house prices dropped recently. We could foretell it because we got a drop there back in November. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, yep. we're on the way up now. Okay. Yep. And as I said, that because that's the, the that's the 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 greeny line that's the exchange figure that we take because what happens is this twenty EA have access to all the data from all the solicitors 
They know the addresses of the properties that are exchanging. So that's how we then know what the pound per square foot figure is. And then it gets correlated with the land registry figures. When that comes out a few months later, we get the data for the land registry and the square footage from that, put more together. And that's where we get the correlation. Um, so that is how, so the bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, we know what's going to happen to house prices five months in advance by watching that orange line. So we put this graph on most weeks. You want to know what's happened to house prices, what the bottom of the market is, what the top of the market is. There you go. Um, my concern is the power listings are moving away a little bit, aren't they? They are, especially that that little tick up there. Yeah, I wonder what you know. Where are we? April, May. It is interesting that, isn't it? I mean, um, yeah. I mean, if you actually, look, I mean, look at this. You know, that that was a lump, and then she dropped down. That was a lump. So we've got to, we've got, we've got to just take it slightly with a a pinch of salt. But it is. No, I agree with you. I think, I think the one thing that's come out in our discussion today is an increase in um, pricing strategy, married to an increase in stock availability. Now. That doesn't work mathematically. What we don't know is whether it will be tempered out by data we see in the coming weeks um, or whether you've got stock that's going to be dramatically reduced in order to sell because the sale number is still quite healthy. If we see the, the number of sale agreed start to slow down as well as an increase in pricing strategy, then I think you've got a problem. Um, and again, if you the, the other thing is withdrawals. Withdrawals are really high, really high, which right. is keeping that that stop levels tempered. But if we get some, uh, if we get some people who are just desperate to sell but can't reduce or won't reduce, that's when we're going to have an issue. I mean, give you an idea. Um, in April, the pound per square foot on on listing on listing was three three five. The month before it was three two five. But you know, and remember here we you know, we are dealing with. Over a hundred thousand. You know, let's just remind ourselves the number of listings. Um, One are... thing we have got to remember is is the bigger stuff starts to come to the market um, earlier than now. Actually, um, the daffodils generally indicate the the big big stuff. Um, okay. So there is an element where I suppose you do measure the data year on year, though. So we would be able to validate that, wouldn't we? We would not. We can't on this show, but uh, no live. But you know, to give you an idea, listing listing. Let's go back to this listings. Um, let's, let's just confirm. Hold on a second. Here we go. So listings was three eight. My apologies. I got. I was reading the graph the wrong way around. Listings was three eight five in March and three nine two year to date on listings. That's that 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 big jump there. But remember, in December it was at three six five. Yeah. Um, or three five seven actually. Um. On said agreed, we've been hovering around 340, 341, 340, you know, so we've been hanging around around that 340 mark. And then on exchange, as I said, we've had a, an uptick on exchanges from 325 to 335. So again, you know, I think it's all right, guys. You know, just don't overvalue and work your stock. Right. Um, I think that's it. Anything else before we go to um, South End? Not really. Um, no, I mean, I've still, I've got on my screen here the slide you showed earlier, the national average asking price of listing versus average asking price of homes sale agreed. And it does appear that the sales agreed is flattening out the average sale price, whereas the average listing price is climbing, um, which leads to disgruntled customers um, in one way or the other because I guess it's their money. So I think that's an interesting stat perhaps to us to uh, look back on next time I see you. Indeed. Um, Indeed. Right. Well, in that case, then, we're now now moving on to the second part of the show where we focus on South End. Um, we're going to be using a piece of software called 20EA. Uh, well, that's the name of the firm that makes it. And they have a number of bits of software. The software we're going to be using is Insights. I'm led to believe there is a freemium version, which gives basic stats going back a, um, a small amount of time, which you can ask for. And then there is also the paid for version, which, in my humble opinion, I, I know the prices, but I'm not going to mention them and do not mention my name because I don't get any kickbacks. Um, 
I think we've done good value for money if you're into your stats and you want to see. Because the magic thing about the 20EA Insights platform is, is, it, is that it proves that you're getting either you've got a greater chance of selling the home, it's independent data, remember, or you're getting a better price for the homes compared to your competitors. It really does analyze. It's like right move plus and on steroids with a couple of Saturn fives strapped to it. So really, if you're into your data and you want to prove that you're a better estate agent, so you stop losing fees or properties on low fees or overvaluing, then this piece of kit could be for you. And as I said, please don't mention my name. So what we're going to do now is let's go and have a look at the stats. Right, Christian. So this is the Insights platform, and we're going to look at some reports. And the first thing we are going to do, so just so, so everyone's aware, the postcodes that we're using for Southend are SS012 and 9. Okay, so that's Southend, a little bit of Leon C, and a bit of Westcliff on C, okay? And I've just taken the decision, that's the lump. Now, I do know there are agents in here that specialize in each, either of those. But again, I think just for the purpose of this, we're just lumping them all together. We are looking at, as I said, South End. And what is particularly interesting is this, is since the 1st of December, January 2029, there have been 28,741 properties that have come onto the market in that time, compared to the number of exchanges, 15,000. So immediately you've basically been paid on less than one in two of the, pro uh, no, bit, sorry, about 52, 53% of the properties that you've put on the market, you've actually been paid on, okay? Let's get back to new listings and let's just see how we how everyone's comparing. We'll just look at stock levels just for a second. And we're looking at the whole month and you can see, so we'll go March, for example. In March, there was 2,100, uh, 2,118 properties in March 2019. That dropped to 1,345 properties for sale um, in, in, in 2022 and now 2002. So again, that's a stat that estate agents could use if they're on the doorstep, Christian, to basically say if someone's trying to overvalue or not, you can say, Mrs. Miggins, are you aware that there are, you know, a, an additional uh, 30, 40% more homes for sale today than there were two years ago. Yeah. Okay. So again, that's important. Just shows you the levels. And then we've got a graph here on stock levels, but instead of looking at stock levels, because agents are more interested in new instructions, let's have a look and see how they compare. So let's just uh, have a, so where we go, we'll go back to new instructions. Here we go. Right then. So the average asking price is 378. So we're going to get a flavor of which agents are in the posh end by looking at the average price. So we'll first, we're going to go, let's go to bear. And it looks like, wow, well done, guys. That's decent market share growth, isn't it? Yeah. How many years are we looking at here? Best part of for, 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 five, for, five, four, five years. Yeah. 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 That, okay. Yeah. That is, uh, that's nice to see. Um, you don't often get the big agent in the town growing their market share. In fact, in the vast majority of occasions, it's a slight drift downwards. So let's go and have a look at Gilbert Rose. Wow. Okay. Nice picture. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. You guys, yeah, you guys need to be really proud of that. That's good. And 416. So obviously they're dealing with the slightly posh houses. We will go and look at the upper quartile in a second. Are they? I noticed it was £397 a square foot was the average for the area, wasn't it? 378 versus 416. I mean, just that... do that. No, no, just do that. Just don't don't have anybody. 378. Right. Average square foot there, I've got 391, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, so at four oh seven for something, you're not. Yeah, what you, again? You've got. What they're you, not super niche, are they? No. What you've got to remember is this: is that, that is in the price level by spans, they don't actually sell for the same pound per square foot. Yeah, you, you have a like a, it's like a U shape. So the really small ones have high pound per square foot, and then yeah. they dip down in the middle, and then they go slightly upwards at the posh end. Okay. Yeah. But 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 I would say that 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 it's it's an expensive market, isn't it? A three hundred ninety pound a foot on average is an expensive market. Yeah, but again, if you actually zeroed in on say Westcliff, what you tend to find is South End on Sea tends to be the more Tesco's end, and the further, okay. and the further you go west, the more the more Waitrose it gets. Roughly, okay. I've never been there, so okay. thank you. Right, 
Um, I'm very much generalizing there, but okay. So home estate and letting agents, um, pretty, they've been around 7%, just holding there. If memory serves me well, I think they focus on one of the, um, the one of the areas I mentioned. I can't remember which one. It's been a shall we? Okay, Hunt Roche. So you guys have just basically been hanging around that 6% mark, but not doing that much. I know we had a spike there, but that was okay. Might have been a new home site. Let's just switch it. Let's switch off new homes. Does that make a difference? No, it doesn't. Okay, so you must have just had a really good purple patch there. Um, there's Hart. As you can see, their market share seems to be uh, drifting downwards as hovering around that 4 or 5% mark. So yeah. Bairstow Eves will be a franchise. Okay. So again, bouncing around the 2 or 4%. Hare and Sons. Okay, yeah, so you guys seem to be to be dropping. Uh, Deadman Gray. Where are they on price? 368, it's interesting. 404. Actually, let's just have a quick look at the prices. We look, Backshaw seem to be the lower end. Hare, yeah. Bairstow Eves. Three seven oh oh we go. Two seven four. Let's go and look at heart. Hunt rush four two nine home. Oh, looks like home tend to be the posh air, posh agents. We'll come back to them in a second. Essex countryside. Okay, you guys seem to have slipped. Point more estates. Purple bricks. Interestingly, nationally, purple bricks have seen market share growth for the last four or five months. Watch them. Okay. Ashley Stone. Turners, Scott, and Stapleton. First call. We'll do a few of these. We'll Abbotts, Goldings. I think you're growing well done. Abode. Oh, and a house price as well. Um, think property. We'll go down to number 30. There we go. Yopa. Bellevue. Castle. You're looking at sales here, aren't you? And I think maybe Martin and new Co. New instructions. There's new instructions. Let's yeah, just... leaders and, and Martin and Co. Maybe more lettings focused, which is why yeah. they're probably featuring quite. Certain, quite certain, uh, yes, yeah, certainly uh, Martin and Co. Really are, yeah, uh, very impressive when it comes to their let their lettings book. There, let's just have a quick look at the upper. Just quarter. before we do, just where do the onlines fit in this marketplace? Just remind me of Purple Bricks and Yopra again. Uh, 12, 602, yeah. And where's Yopa? Inter um, interestingly, no EXP. No. They're putting, I'll yeah. tell you what, market share, they're, they're, they're doing really well at the moment. Just what, you know. It's a phenomenon. Right, let's go and have a look at the upper quarter. Um, So uh, 28,000. I might go and look at the upper quintile. They're up at 20%, so let's just have a look. So I'm looking for around five or 6,000 properties. Okay. 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 I'm just going to take it down to six. I want to do 600 because I do want to look at the cream of the cream. And it just shows us here that bears were number one, but they've now, and it looks like home and Gilbert and Rose. Let's just have a quick look at their market share in the posh end. So Gilbert. Well, Rose, I don't know what 800 and something gets you around there. I'm, I'm on home site. So I'm actually going to have a look. Let's see what you get for 800 and something. Again, go, go south end plus three miles because, again, it is very much like chalk and cheese. Yeah. Market. Okay. Uh... So whilst you're doing that, let us now move on and look at um, – we're, we're going to come on to the sales in a second by looking at this report, okay? So this – that we it defaults back to two and a bit years, so I think I'm, I'm going to look at the last year. Okay, here we go. You get quite a lot for your money. Yeah, it's all right. What is what is what is particularly? In fact, let me show you this. Um, there is a bit of a difference between South End and I'll just I'll just show you this. So, um, my daytime job, as I'm, as I'm hold on a second, can you see my can you see a, a can you see the thing that says South End? Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Hold on. Right. So, my daytime. I'm a property statistician. And um, my th this stuff I do on the show is just a hobby of mine. I just enjoy doing it. Yeah. And I share the UK stats, then I go to a town and look at the the town stats. Uh, I'm a property statistician by profession, and my daytime job, the bit that earns me the money, is I create content for estate agents. Okay. Okay. 
and and then they can then publish that on social media as themselves you know so i'm a ghost writer and a ghost content provider yeah yeah oh, it's so, brilliant content i mean it's, yeah. it, and it also mixes up you know people advertising properties to the market etc um i think it's really good content yeah so these are the sort of sort of things that that we do so put the agent face there with the agent's logo so again just to show you the difference between leon c and south end look that, that is a massive difference you know 359 pounds a square foot as opposed to the you know, and it looks to me like stuff that's really going to nourish sellers and landlords in particular landlords i would have thought does it work do they do they are they interested in it yeah, I mean, the magic thing is this. If you want to attract landlords and vendors to your agency, you need to give them content which is interesting. And and a lot of agents just put their listings and listings and listings, which is not going to attract landlords or vendors to you. But well, they've got they, that on right moving, primary, not primary. Yeah. No. I mean, what is interesting, uh, 10,000 uh, vendors were interviewed by the Property Academy last year, and 36% of homeowners said they wanted they chose an estate agent because of their local market knowledge putting listings isn't showing market knowledge. No. So I mean, there you go. That that just shows you the percentage of homes that are privately rented. You know, here's the course, there's core South End, and then you've got the posher areas here where the, the rentals numbers goes down. Um, and again, here's just some, here's another one, which I think is quite interesting, is the percentage of homes that are single occupancy. And you can see here that the rental section, which was here, it matches very closely with the rental section with the high percentage of single occupancy. Whilst the families are in the, I think these must be terraced houses or Victorian looking at the shape of them, Victorian villas, that sort of thing. Yeah. And this is the sort of stats that, you, you know, you can be doing more national stats as well by creating content. You're going to be interesting. So I create the show, which is of interest to estate and letting agents. Agents should be creating content about South end, you know, so this is data that you can get from, from government websites, um, this is data you can get from other websites, and you, but you know agents have got the time to do this. But this is the sort of things that agents should be doing to get more business on the market. But anyway, yeah, I totally back, agree. Let's get back to the stats on South End. So we are. Let's just move that to um, April the twenty third. There we go. So this is April the twenty third on of twenty three to um, the twenty second of April. I have a lot of detail here, Christian. Um, so immediately, this is the new new instruction market share, which again, every agent is going to want to have a look at. And the sole subject of contract ratio of, of, of what you put on the market versus what you, um, you know, what you put on the market versus what you sell. So yeah. the, the real gold here is these columns here, exchange and withdrawal. So I know you know what's coming, but for those in South End and those that haven't watched the show before, there is absolute true gold here, and this will prove there are some agents in here who There's are, some monster numbers in there. Yeah, and, and look how wide the gap is, okay? So would it be, like I said earlier in the show, a property will only leave an estate agent's book if she withdraws or exchanges. Do you agree with that premise? Uh, to a certain extent, you've got the anomalous, which is where the vendor pulls out post-sale agreed, but other than that, I agree with you. Okay, but but still, it's a that will be classed as a withdrawal, won't it? Uh, well, figures wise, I guess it's a cancellation. Yeah, it's a you are correct. Property, it is a withdrawal. A property yeah. can only leave an agent's book if it comes up withdraws from the agent or exchanges. We yeah. agree. We're in agreement, right? So, therefore, in the last year, if you actually have a look here, the number of properties that Gilbert and Rose have actually exchanged and withdrawn on is the is those two. So, it would be five hundred. And 89 in those postcodes okay according to this data it's not going to capture everything but it's pretty good it's this is gold standard when it comes to data yeah okay because we're not just scraping websites here we we they're going to solicit they've got access to all the solicitors data it is really really good stuff so the thing here is this the average um south end agent has exchanged so 41.6% of properties that have left agents' books in South End, they've been paid on. 58.39%, 58, they've not been paid on. Shocking. Or the other way of looking at it, the average out of out of all the properties that have left agents' books in the last year in South End, 41.61% of people have moved. Yeah. Okay. But this is where the true magic happens. Let's have a look. Gilbert and Rose, um, 
if you see, have exchange contracts on 39.5, bears at 40, home 47.4. I mean, my eyes are just landing on Durban Grey there. Yeah. Because they're, they're, I'm going to say, at the lower end of where you'd want to be. You'd want to be early 60s, really, wouldn't you? If you've got a... Again, uh, we, we're, we're dealing with the South here. The numbers the numbers go all are very different across the country. Yeah. You know, if we were in central London, this would be 22, 23%. If we were in inner London, it would be 28%. So, you know, we're at 41. It's where we would where we would expect. But let's just have a look. 47.44 for home divided by Gilbert and Rose at 39.05. That means... Home can go in and say to their homeowners, you have a 21% greater chance of moving home with us than the others. Yeah. Not criticizing. These are just the stats. We've got yeah, absolutely. Stats. Yeah. And speak with 28. Okay. But these are the this is the data that you could take to a punter's house and say, Mrs. Miggins, this is independent data that proves that we are a better agent. So therefore, I would certainly hope Deadman and Gray are charging a higher fee because you've got a greater chance of moving home. Can we have a look at asking to achieve yet or not? Or is it too early? Too early on that one. Is it? Okay. 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 Well, I'll tell you what, because it's you. (laughs) So, I mean, let's just have a look at, look, look, Gilbert and Rose, look at the, look at their working, their stock, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Six out of 10 of the houses they're putting on, they're reducing. So we yeah. talked about this earlier on. What's their other agents? Look, Deadman Gray are not working their stock, but hey, that doesn't mean they're not selling because they're selling a lot. So that, I suspect Deadman Gray, what we're about to show you, ladies and gentlemen, is the difference between what you put the house on the market for and what you sell it for. But we'll just have a quick look at some other data because there's going to be some other agents that just want to see their stats. So we'll just have a quick wait, two seconds for you, ladies and gentlemen, just to see what your agency is doing. Am I right in saying that Deadman Gray had got one of the better growth graphs that you just showed let's have a look right okay he's, he's um there we go there's some growth there from two up to four isn't there is it the yeah, you showed of... a different graph a moment ago which uh map there oh that's it there okay um that's not what I remember seeing. So I'm I'm thinking of a different agent. That's not the agent I think. Okay. They've no, gone from two to three point eight, have they? Three point nine, something no, like that. There's Gilbert Rose, which seemed to have the biggest growth. That's the picture I remember. Okay, okay. right. However, they're ex- you know, and you do expect this, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the big agents do tend to have a lower exchange ratio. Okay, that, that but that's fine, you know, if that's the model you go for. Whilst the other agents that are in the more of the middle pack more of a quality as opposed to a quantity in terms of whether you actually get the house sold or not. And I'm not saying that Gilbert and Rose and Bear are not quality. I'm just talking about you can either play the numbers game or you can play, right, what well, we've got smaller numbers, but we'll get more of them through. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. Okay. Um, so here we go. Deadman's. Well, we didn't know this was coming, ladies and gentlemen, but this is, this is, this is, right. A lot of not data. What I was expecting. Is it what you were expecting? No. Well, that just shows... That, right, so this column here shows whether an agent is overvaluing or not, right? So therefore, in the last 12 months, out of the 718 properties that Gilbert and Rose have put on the market and the 696 that Bears have put on and everyone else have put onto the market, 20EA have applied an AVM, an automated valuation model, a ValPal figure to, to, you know, to you know, other, other AVMs are available to every one of the properties that are put on the market. And then they've had a look at what you put it on the market for. And Gilbert and Rose, on average, have put the property on the market for an average of 2.7% above what 20EA thought it was worth. Now, AVM models, yeah, okay, swings and roundabouts, you know, are they brilliant? Well, if Apple, if they're comparing apples with apples and they're using the same model in the same town, you know, it, it it's a level playing field. And you can see here that of the top agents, you've got anywhere between 0.32. So it looks like Deadman's are put are keenly pricing their properties because they're putting it on at on average 0.32 percent below what the AVM model thinks it is worth. Mm. Okay. Whilst the other four range between 1.12. So let's just, just remind ourselves, Deadman's are having an exchange ratio of 55. Well, look at the, what are the price reductions as well. 
So fifty five, and then thirty one point eight. Thirty one. So the so the average yeah. in, in the average number of prop. So you have a one in two chance, or forty nine point nine nine percent chance of a property being reduced in South End in the last year. Okay, so look at the fall through rates. Look at the it says to me they're having bank straight conversations with the vendors, and it's costing them money. It, it's not; it's costing them market share, but not money. Because look at the fall through rate, eleven percent. Yeah, it's costing them market share, but not look, money. There, yeah, look, the average market, the fall through rate in South End is twenty eight percent. Yeah, exactly. So, so death straight, aren't they? Low fall through rate, low price changes. And the reason they're doing low is because they're putting them on at a keen price. They might even be putting them slightly under and getting a little bit of frenzied going. But what you put the house on the market for and what you actually sell it for are two different things. So therefore, what they then do is they look at what did you actually achieve for the home from your original asking price? Okay. So therefore, Gilbert and Rose have achieved on average 2.68% less than the original asking price, whilst Deadman's 4.87 and heart at five. So the net effect is you, you take this one away from that, but then percentages can get quite complicated. So basically what they do is this, if everyone put on a 450,000 pound house, what would each agent achieve? Gilbert and Rose would achieve 449, Bears would achieve 452, Home would achieve 440, Hunt Roach would, would get 445, Hearts 437 and Deadman Gray at 426. So again, the, you know, Deadman's there, you know, again, it's statistics, just showing that according to the VAT AVM model, probably not achieving as much as other agents, but they are getting them away and they're keenly pricing them. Whilst, you know, if I was a bear bears and I was going up against Gilbert and Rose because they're the two big agents, this basically says here, Mrs. Miggins, I will get you 2,000 Four hundred pounds, give or damn it, more than Gilbert Rose mm. is independent data to prove that. Okay, because it looks like those two are slugging it out as, as the top, as the kingpin or queen agent. But then there's, as I said, there's other stats there that just, you know, just have a look, ladies and gentlemen, where you stand. And this, you know, this like most things, it's never going to be a perfect uh, like top trumps where you get perfect everything. But you use the data to your advantage to tell the message that you want, and this is all independent data. Anything on this before we go and look at some more data? Uh, no, in particular. I mean, it's quite an interesting picture. Um, this is and, yeah. Okay, so th this is this is a new graphic. Well, you saw the you saw the regional pictures. This is the town. This is the South End. So the the red line is looking at new instructions, and the green line is looking at the average price of the exchange. Notice how tight that is. That's really really good to see. Yeah, there's an interesting picture forming now, isn't there? Yeah. This is the net levels of new instructions you can see at the end of each year where Christmas comes in and you can see what's happening, how it compares to last year and sales agreed and how. So look, there are 15.95% more sales today uh, at the moment compared to the same time in 2023. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's good to see. We'll just have to see if there's any other stats. Um, um, so... You can see here, this shows you where the hybrid agents, the hybrid includes purple bricks. So a lot of this drop is going to be purple bricks, but it does include EXPs and the other cell agents. Um, and you can see how that is changing in terms of new instructions. And then this just shows you, look, here we go. So this is the number of properties that were available and then a month ago, and then how many went through, look, look at that. So look, number withdrawn 520 off what 1700. That is a massive number of withdrawals. Yeah, I told you, didn't I, that withdrawals are high. That is a yeah. huge... Now, of course, some of those might have gone back on as new listings from other agents, but that is a massive number of, of withdrawals. Um, you asked how... It's, a, it's an awful number as well, withdrawals. Because um, you've done the work. Yeah, but it's overvaluing. Work the stock. Work the stock. I mean, again, let's just remind ourselves, you know, you've got Gilbert and Rose working the stock. Okay, their exchange ratio might not be a, the best. You know, it's about the average, not 41. So it's about the average. Might be something you could probably just have a look at. But the fundamental thing is this. You're getting a decent price for your home. You're working the stock. Good to see. Right. Okay, let's just see which agents are, how quick it takes to sell. So it takes an average 67 days in the last year to get a sale agreed from new instruction. We'll just look at what the last year's figures was. 42. 
Okay. And it's taken on average 120 days to get it through to from sale agreed to completion. We'll just Not see bad. What, last year was 133. So again, mm. very similar to what the national figure was. And we can yeah. get a flavor of which agent it seems to be, you know, so Hunt Roche, 214 days from new instruction to completion, whilst Turner's 155 days. So you get it's a, a flavor. massive difference. I mean, again, some agents do tend to wait to instruct the solicitors. So I'm not so concerned about where the blue line is. It's the total figures. I, I would suspect Coulson Jason are that, Coulson James. Um, but again, you know. Hopefully that will change, Chris. As the material information piece comes in, I think one of the routes into material information, material information is through digitization and looking at um, different toolkits to, to enable that. Many toolkits are available. Um, and I think that agents using the material information the upfront piece of preloading <clears throat> the stock not just with information but also with commitment and intent from the vendors so getting those solicitors instructed on day one i think it's vital um yeah. you know you shouldn't what, what did you hunt rush you said was was it 60 days more than the the fastest so um so hunt rush is a total of Hold on. I think it was 200 and something. 214 versus 155. Yeah, I mean, that's massive. But weren't Hunt Rush one of the posh, the, the posher agents? Could be that that's the problem. Some it's often the case on the big deals that the gap between exchange and completion so, so is Hunt huge. Rush, home are the big, the home are the, have we got home on, on this one? Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, second. No, no home, home are posh agent. They seem to be doing all right. 173 days, and they're a posh yeah. agent, aren't they? Yeah. But there you go. Isn't that interesting? Again, all aspects that you can look at. Let's um, let's now move on and let's look at the rental sector. And the thing that screams at me is, look at this. Look at the growth of open rent from 3 or 4% in 2019 to somewhere around the early teens. That is, yeah, okay. And that's, that's that's endemic across the whole of the UK. So isn't it interesting, I said this last week, is that, yes, the number of landlords selling up is up 43%, and the number of landlords buying is down 20%, but still, if you those are percentages. If you actually look at the raw numbers, the net figure is more landlords are still buying than they are selling. Those are government official stats. Yeah, the conversation <clears throat> right now, though, is is open rents appearance as a marketing agency for available letting stock. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's kind of interesting in that, you know, the questions really are, do, do you need a sort of traditional model to rent and, uh, well, to, to market and rent a, a letting property? Uh, more importantly, where's the management going? Yeah, and, um, I sus I, and again, if you look at the raw stats, that a lot, you know, a lot of, a lot of lettings that are lo lo you're not, they're not leaving the landlords, not leaving the market, they're just leaving your agency. Yeah, and the, and the management's where the money is. Yeah, so so what I do is I teach I teach letting agents to not only attract landlords with data, but also create um, landlord forums that other landlords from even self-managed and other letting agents want to join. And once they join, because they're part of the forum and there's techniques that you can use, that's when you can then hit them with the with this data and other data. So they say, well, hold on a second. It's like people with banks. They don't love their bank. They just can't be bothered to move. And every yeah. letting agent tells me, if you can just get a landlord to come and talk to me, I'll build a relationship and eventually get the business. So there are there are techniques on how to attract landlords. You've just got to put the time and effort in, which again, unfortunately, most people haven't got the the, the effort or the patience to do. Uh, that's why, again, if you look, most 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 lettings are on the slide. But if you actually put your effort in, you can actually grow your lettings business really well with some smart marketing mm. and again, landlord forums. If anyone's interested and they want to have a chat with me, then do give me a shout. All my numbers are all on social media. We can have a chat about how you can grow your lettings agency. Um, again, let's just, just but quick... go on. Go on. As I understand it, open rent don't have a managing proposition management proposition. Is that no, correct? Self managed, self managed landlords. Or it's being marketed through open rent and managed through a another on that list. 
Yeah, but every agent dobs every other agent in because if they're spending two grand a month on right move, everyone else should as well. Mm. Very cutthroat out there. Right, again, this is interesting. Average rent in South End in 2019, £871 pounds a month. And the average rent in the last year, two, wow. £1,237. That's quite dramatic, isn't it? It is. Although, interestingly, this is good. If we actually go back to 2016, which this data doesn't, in the UK, rents are still 4.8% cheaper in real terms than they were in 2016. Based on what? Based, on, based on what the average rent was in 16. This is UK figures. Now, regions are different. Okay, yeah, is... You said it was comparably cheaper, though. So 4.8% in real terms. So, you know, right. rents have gone up by, say, 28%, and inflation's gone up. Um, by say thirty two percent. No, no, I've got the figures here. I know it's out. Inflation at thirty point eight on yeah. average. Rents have gone up by about twenty six percent, twenty five, twenty six percent in that period. Which means if inflation's gone up more than rent, rents haven't kept up with inflation. Which means in real terms they're four percent cheaper. It kind of does. I mean, I know that. Okay, we're not talking about wages here. Or no, earnings. but that affordability piece is quite interesting. No, no it's not. No. Although this is interesting. Is this is if you go back to 2016, the um, rent as a proportion of take-home pay was 29%. Yeah. With a couple of... Where do you think it is now? I'm not even going to guess because I haven't got a clue. You tell me. Okay. It's it's 30 point zero, 30 point, point. It's about 1% more, which I know is more, but you would think it's more. You'd think it's like it'd gone from yeah. like 29 to 35 or 38. It yeah. hasn't. The, right. the, you know, it, it, we all get inflation blindness, and it is hard work out there, and there's some people going through some real challenges at the moment. Yeah, if you actually look at the cold, hard data, you know, it's that's it. But again, that doesn't take into account that doesn't take into account other things have gone, gone through the roof. But again, there's the rental data, ladies and gentlemen, of just just what's been happening in the property market. We can't see market. Well, you can you can see new instructions, but again, it just gives you a flavour of what's coming on the market for new, and it doesn't show you whether it's new or. But again, here we go. That looks like a student. Actually, it looks like that. I guess is that a student let? There must be some student. There you go. Could be a student let. Don't know. Um, I hope that's been of interest. Right. I think we'll call that the end of the show. Um, Final thoughts, Christian. It looks looks all right. I'm interested to see where uh, stock versus sales is going to be at in probably, well, I think you and I meet every couple of months, isn't it? So it's probably a really good time to review that to see whether we are noticing an increase of stock to the market, buyer empowerment, um, more choice, et cetera, and whether it's going to be have an impact or whether it is just actually some nice figures of, Plenty for agents to earn fees off as long as they can get them sold. Indeed. And you can see by the stats we looked at South End is it's all about getting them on at the right price. Or if you don't get them on the right price, work your stock. Okay. Simple as that. Yeah. Thank you for your time today, Christian. But more importantly, thank you for watching the stat show. Next, we'll be back next week for episode for week 17, 2024. We'll have another guest. And um, we thank you for your attention. And if you've got any questions, put them either send me a private message or put them into the comments, especially constructive ones. Um, thank you for your time, Christian. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Chris. See you soon.